Hello students, welcome to Statics. I'm Dr. Stewart, and today we're going to go over the outline for exam three. Now to get to the outline for exam three, let's first go to the course website. So we'll go to the top of the course website, which is me.utep.edu slash cmstewart slash. So you type that into your web browser, you'll get taken to my website, and then let's go to teaching. And then from teaching, let's go to statics. Okay, so now we're on the course's website. And on this website, we have pretty much all of the course content, the syllabus, schedule, and we have materials for the exam. So let's click on the exam button. And then let's click on exam three outline. Let's open that. And let's also open up the exam three example. So exam three covers chapters six, seven, and eight of the Hibbler Statics book. If it is given as a in-class exam, it has a duration of 80 minutes. If it's going to be given as a online exam, you'll be sent an email with instructions on how to take it online. The exam contains three challenge problems that are worth 90% and a short answer section that'll be worth about 10%. To receive credit, all work needs to be shown for your problem following the problem structure that we'll talk about at the end of this uh, outline. A single-sided letter size formula sheet is allowed, but you must turn it in with your exam and your formula sheet must be handwritten. The only things that you're allowed to bring to the exam are pencils or pens, erasers, calcu uh, uh, calculator, uh, ruler, and a formula sheet, and follow the rules in our syllabus, in the course syllabus, pertaining to cheating, as well as the type of calculator that you can use during the exam. In order to receive partial credit, you must list your knowns and unknowns, as well as provide a free body diagram. Those are the first two steps in statics, always. So the outline for exam three, here we outline the types of problems that you could expect to see on the exam. There could be more than one problem in each category, so it's important for you to be comfortable with solving problems for, from any of these types of bullets or any of these categories. The first one here is to determine the forces in each member of a truss using the method of joints. Second one, is to do the same thing, determine the forces in each member of a truss, but using the method of sections. So you'll need to be able to know how to use both of these methods. You'll need to be able to identify if a body is proper, improper, or redundantly constrained, as well as identify zero force members. Other things we'll need to be able to do is to determine the normal force, shear force, and bending moments that are acting at a point or at a, a, a preferred section, and draw shear and moment diagrams for a beam. So drawing how shear and moments evolve across the entire length of a beam. You also could be asked to determine if a frictional body remains in equilibrium, if, it's, if it remains in static equilibrium or if it, if it moves and, be, and becomes dynamic, and determine the coefficient of friction, the angle, or applied load which is needed to maintain a state of impending motion. How to prepare for this exam? There's a couple of things that you can do. The first thing you should do is read the book. Read chapters 6, 7, and 8. I know a lot of times students buy the book and you never really end up reading the book. You end up, you go to lectures or you watch the videos and Lectures and videos are distilled content. It's not all of the details. Reading the book can really clarify things when you're uncertain. Um, other things you can do is to review the notes and example problems uh, and, and 
you know, rewatch the videos if you'd like to. Review slash redo the homework problems. That is an important process. Take a homework problem that you've already solved and put yourself in a quiet room with no aids, no, no, no help, and try to solve that homework problem again. Can you do it? And then lastly, solve extra problems from the book. Close your eyes, flip to a page, put your finger on the page, and find a random problem and try to solve it. Again, with, without all the aids, without the internet, without anything else, and see, have you really mastered the concept? Can you solve these problems in a simulated um, uh, um, exam kind of format? Now, let's go over kind of the structure for exam problems. And this is the structure that we always use in solving problems. The first thing we need to do is list our knowns and unknowns, listing out the given parameters that we have and listing out what are the things that we're asked to find. What are the things that we need to find? Next, we should create a free body diagram, a neat free body diagram where we replace the constraints and supports with the reactions in our body. If we draw a beautiful diagram and we carefully think through our knowns and unknowns, it can make it a million times easier in solving statics problems. The next step is for us to list any assumptions that we're making. Um, say if we have a supplementary equations or we, we think we have an idea of how to solve the problem, let's list those assumptions out. And then we get into the steps of solving the problem. Give necessary details so that, you know, if someone's actually grading your exam, that we can follow along with your calculations, that it's organized so we can understand what you did. And, uh, and if you don't give the steps, if it's not organized, it's going to be very difficult for us to grade and you won't be able to get partial credit. Make sure to label each of your equations. And if you use equation one and you plug it into equation two, then state one into two. And then finally, your answer. Include units in your final answers and box your final answer. And please, be neat. Disorganized, incomplete, or copied work, it could be penalized. You, you could just lose points because you didn't solve the problem in a way that someone could understand. So that is our exam outline. Um, it's pretty straightforward. And you can go to the course website, download it, print it out, take a look at it, and get started working and preparing for the exam. Now, we also, on the website, have an example exam three. And this is a useful tool for you. To This is basically a practice exam that is just like a real exam. I gave this uh, in spring of 2015. This is a real exam I gave. So this will give you a good idea of the level of difficulty to expect on your exam. Uh, so in this one here, we've got the short answer section, fundamental problem one, Draw the free body diagram for this, for this beam. That's a pretty straightforward problem. And then list the knowns and unknowns. That's pretty straightforward, right? So that's the 10% uh, section. Now we get into the first challenge problem, which is worth 30 points. And this problem, it asks us to find the forces in members BC, GC, and GE using the method of sections and indicate whether the mem members are in tension or compression, given some information. And you see, right off the bat, you gotta create a free body diagram, you've gotta list out your knowns and unknowns, and those activities are worth points. Don't forget to do it. You forget, you don't get the points, right? Uh, challenge problem two, this one asks you to A, find the support reactions in the beam, and then B, draw and label the shear and moment diagram, and then C, to fill in a table with the, with the values from those diagrams. Again, free body diagrams and knowns and unknowns are worth points. And then at the end of this one, we have a little table here where we're gonna need to fill in the values of the shear force and the bending moment at certain positions. And, and with these tables, remember, that when we're filling in the V and the M values, we're trying to get the values just to the right of point of, of the X position. So just to the right of O, what is V and M? 
just to the right of 1.5, what is V and M? Okay? And if you have some questions about that, go back and look at those example videos that we have that where we fill in these types of tables. And the last problem on this practice exam, it asks us to determine the minimum har horizontal force P required to hold the crate from sliding down the plane. So we've got this, this is an impending motion type problem. The crate has a mass of 50 kilograms. We're given the uh, static uh, uh, coefficient of friction. And again, free body diagrams, knowns and unknowns, and then you gotta solve the problem, right? Now this practice exam, I do not provide solutions to it so that you really are gonna be taking this as a practice. Take it, print it out, or load it up on your tablet. Try to solve this exam, giving yourself only 80 minutes, and then use the book, use your notes, and try to figure out what the true solution is to those problems. Did you get it right or did you get it wrong, right? And of course, you can talk with your classmates or other people you're studying with and compare your answers for this practice exam. All right, so that's pretty much everything that you need to know for the exam and how to prepare for it. Good luck in your studies. Really, it's important for you as you prepare for exams to not uh, stay up overnight studying. Instead, each day as you get closer to the exam, have a plan. I want to look at chapter six uh, for the next two days. And then I want to look at chapter seven for the next two days. And then chapter eight for the next two days. And then my exam is the day after that. So give yourself enough time uh, to study. So that's it. Good luck. And I'll see you later.